you all pray with me. Holy God, have your way. You are the potter and we are the clay. Mold us by this, your word. In the name of Christ, amen. I was asked to do the children's message in our church some time ago. And uh, so like any good provider of the children's message, I uh, used the opportunity to speak to the adults in the congregation. (laughs) But the only problem with that was that the kids didn't oblige. They didn't play along. See, because I asked them, I planned to ask them, and I did. I said, uh, who's afraid of the dark here? Expecting that one or two of them would kind of fess up to the fact that they are indeed afraid of the dark. And for a moment, I saw two kids kind of inching their hands up like they were going to do it. But then this phenomenon happened that we've observed in sociology. See, because they looked to their left and their right, they saw that other people weren't afraid of the dark. So not only did they put their hands down, but their body language changed. We call it groupthink. And they went, I'm not afraid of the dark. Almost the whole thing changed. It was almost like, I love the dark. Let's shut out the lights in here. (laughs) And so, I don't even remember what my point was, see, because they didn't play along. So I tell you that for two reasons. One, when you got the children's message, talk to the kids. Don't talk to the adults. <laughs> the adults get their own teaching moment. Secondly, I tell you, I, I bring that story to you because I want to ask you and I ask myself, can we stop acting like we've not been afraid? I'm thinking about you friends, my fellow young preachers, my uh, fellow shepherds who are tending to flocks. And I'm worried that we're signaling to people that God and fear never intersect. Especially in a culture in which anxiety and depression have this increasing stigma, I'm concerned that we're saying, maybe we don't mean to do it, we're saying that weakness is not a thing we should admit. I'm worried about that, and here's why I'm worried about it. I myself have struggled with anxiety and depression. And I had people come up to me and say things like this. Maybe you've heard it before. They said, hey man, you just need to trust God. They assumed something about my journey not being a minute in my shoes. But here's how God works. You guys know it better than I do probably. God tends to take that judgmental eye that you've turned towards someone and turn it right back on yourself. And I remember the times I had done that very same thing. I went up to somebody who was in the midst of a real human struggle, a real veritable human experience of fear, and I said, hey, you just need to trust God without taking seriously what they were going through. I'm worried that we're sending the wrong message about weakness and about how that weakness stands next to God, and I'm worried that we're sending that message with the Bible. You know what it says in Psalm 27, I bet. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? And I wonder if we're looking right there and saying, there it is right there, see it? I got God, so I don't got fear. I got God, and so I shouldn't have fear. Fear and God don't ever intersect. I got God, so I don't got fear. But I want to share you a couple of other psalms. Read them to you. Psalm 6 3 says, My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Psalm 10 says, Why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Psalm 22, maybe you've heard this on the lips of somebody else. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I don't know about you, but I think he's afraid. I think that's real human struggle. It's real anxiety. We might even call it a little bit of depression as well. But here's the strange thing about this book of Psalms. It's this book of questions of the soul, what we've been talking about in here. I find it to be the book of questions of the soul. That word psalms comes from the Hebrew word which means to him. It means praises. 
But the strange thing about this book of praises, or five books of praises, is this. That the largest category in this book of praise is lament. It's not thanksgiving. It's not trust. It's not confidence. It's lament. It is song. It is expression. It is poem. It is rhyme in the midst of deep terror, struggle, and doubt. So that suggests something to me. If this Tehillim means praises, and the largest category of praise in there is lament, it suggests to me that a high, high, high form of praise is confessing weakness. A high form of praise is lifting up to God how weak indeed I am, how real my experience of struggle is, and how incapable I am of getting out of it. It says to me that wrestling with God might be the fiercest act of spirituality we could embody. That's what this psalmist shows us. Passes wisdom down to us. He shows us honest faith. It's not dishonest, feigned faith. It's honest faith because what has come before it is honest and deep struggle. He's a wrestler just like his forebear Jacob. You know it. He spent the whole night through wrestling with the divine figure and he woke up in the morning with a limp and a new name, which is Israel, a word that means one who struggles or God wrestler. David's just a God wrestler. It's his fierce act of spirituality. And he's saying, maybe you, friend, should be honest about your weakness and wrestle with God too, but beware, God is a great wrestler. He's undefeated all time. God is a good wrestler, but he's also better than that. He's a graceful winner. He restores you. David shows us that. He shows us how to embody that fierce, honest spirituality that results in real, fierce faith. He shows us what it means to get to this. Listen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's honest, friends, because he's borne the honest struggle before it. My best moment of faith. My friend Daryl down here talked about a highlight reel of certain athletes last night. Well, I've got a highlight that I actually think is a good one. My best moment of faith is in the midst of my depression when I was sobbing, when things had fall apart, and I cried out to God, how long, how long are you going to make me go through this? How long, where are you, God? And I cried out to God with all my weakness, and I found in that moment that God's presence matters a whole lot. I found God to be a graceful wrestler and a graceful winner who lifted me up and took me to a place of honest faith. The psalmist, friends, doesn't give us solutions and answers to our fears. He doesn't tell us that your fear will end when you bear this honesty in front of God. But what he does is he gives us company and comfort and compassion in the midst of our real human experience. I think there's another man who did that as well. I think there's another man that knelt with tears in a garden before his deep, terrible moment and said, God, if you would, take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. I think there's another man in a terrible moment of fear cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Someone giving us comfort and company in the midst of our struggle. And I think that man also said, helped us to say, whenever you are weak, I am strong. We just sang it. We are weak, but he is strong. So friends, I say to you, may we embody that honesty with our neighbors. May we not signal to them that they need to to get rid of this fear, but may we walk alongside them as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done. May we suffer with them if need be. Get on our knees if we must so that we may be raised into new life as Jesus invites us to be. May we embody honest struggle so that we can move to honest faith and say something like this, friends, and this this requires a lot of honest struggle before we can say something like this. 
Yea, though I walk through a valley of a shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You set up a a table, a meal for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me, and surely I shall be in in the house of the Lord all my life long. Friends, may we be honest in struggle so that we can embody honest faith and say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's pray. God, we come to you with what might be a very powerful act of praise, and that is to confess that we are weak. That in these bodies we have real fears and insecurities and we pray that your presence will matter more than those fears and insecurities and that you will move us to a place where we can see you moving us to a place of strength. In the name of Christ, amen.